Hurley. I'm a instructor of construction with over 22 years experience with the North Carolina Community College system with different various community colleges. My expertise lines, lies in house construction and sustainability, alternative energies, that sort of thing. This is a whole new ball game for me. So when I'm sharing my ideas and techniques with you, I'm not saying that's the way you need to do it. That's totally up to you. My way is not always the best way. It's just my way. So I wanted to make that completely clear to you. There are gonna be different ideas, different methods, and different buses. I mean, there's a ton of different buses out there. My bus is a 2001 MPV ER pusher. So it has a cat engine with an Allison transmission on it and it's in the rear. So all my front is completely clear of any engine. If you have other ideas, share them with me, help me. Teach me as I teach you as well. Otherwise, I hope this helps inexperienced people going through the process of transforming their bus into their home. When you're taking everything apart, get Ziploc bags and put everything in it to separate it so that you'll know where it goes. Even label it if you need to. Also make note of the order in which you took it apart. If I were to put this housing back on there now, then I will not be able to get these plastic inserts in later because they go in and are screwed from the back side. To make note, if you have any weird places like this front piece that I have here, save that piece of plywood so that you can use it as a template when you're cutting out your insulation and your new subfloor. This is where the heater set in the front. So here's the steering wheel and this set in the front. This is a fresh air intake. So you can kind of get an idea of how far it came out. And I've taken it out it was held in place by a bunch of bolts or screws actually. And uh, it was fairly easy for me to get to mine. This is a 2001 Thomas MVPER. So it's a pusher, the engine's in the back. And I have these little convenient little accessory panels in here, so I was able to get right in here and the air intakes, this is for fresh air as well. And then all of these connections, I was able to take apart the, the uh, heater lines came through this little hole here, ran up through here and then into the unit. So I was able to just take those off and pull those out so that I can clean everything. You can see how crappy, dirty everything is. I'm trying to get everything nice and clean before I put it back together. I had to stop with my floor insulation at this point in the front because I haven't got the heater back in place. And the heater is three quarters of an inch shorter than what that is. So if I were to put insulation all the way, then I wouldn't be able to get my heater in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down some three quarter inch insulation at this point, set my heater on that, and then I can continue my two inch up to that and then get this little strip over here. Here are some of the parts to my uh, bus heater and we have taken them uh, completely, totally apart and I have sanded everything or wire brushed it and you can see that we've got some pitting uh, of the metal and it's okay. I mean, this is still, it's still solid. It's just got some holes in it. Really, you don't have to worry about this. I am gonna patch this because air 
does flow through this thing. Air does flow through this thing. Here is the, the fresh air vent of the unit. And then it comes through that coil that I was talking about. And it has blowers. I'll show you what the blowers look like. These are the blowers. I've got a bit of a mess here. But, so there's two blowers. And I haven't cleaned these up quite yet. So I'm going to clean those up. But that's what the blowers look like. And I'm just going to leave all of that attached. And most of them come with just a plug. So just take that plug off and clean everything up. And then you can reassemble it. Make sure you take pictures along the way so you know how stuff's going to go back in. And if you do any painting, make sure that you save any of the labels uh, so you can go back and find model numbers to it. Don't just take pictures of it. Leave it, you know, protect it. I don't really care what this thing looks like, to be honest with you, because it's going to be covered with wood. We're going to have it looking really nice when it's all said and done. So basically, we've just painted it uh, with some metal paint. This is just Rust-Oleum high-performance rusty metal primer. I could go back and paint it with some pretty black or something, but I'm probably not going to. When I'm cleaning these blowers, I want to take care that I don't use a solvent that's going to mess up these motors. I'm not going to take all this apart. Uh, it's just too much of a hassle. So I'm going to use some mild detergents to clean up the outsides, kind of go over these fans a little bit and put them back together uh, as best I can. I'm not even going to paint these. So there's no rust showing on any of these. So <clears throat> they should be fine. I also don't want to take all this wiring harness apart. It has a specific way of going together, and I'm not going to try to remember how to do this. I've got my little harness here that plugs into the bus, and that's I'm good with that. One thing to note, I'm not really sure what these little coils here, I don't know if they're a temperature sensor or if they are an electric heater to help boost the air uh, before the hot water reaches uh, the, um, the coil. So if anybody happens to know this, chime in and let me know if these are actually uh, thermostats or if they are some sort of electric heater coil. So this is the heater core out of our front bus heater. And it's basically a heat exchanger meaning that we have the antifreeze that runs from the engine into the heat exchanger and it runs back and forth across these coals and then we force air through here which uh, is heated up and, and you know, become heated. So <clears throat> these mostly have a little connection on it that <clears throat> has a little knob in which you can turn. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. So I can hold the, the phone. So as I turn this knob, you can see how it effectively just turns that switch. And it's just a it's just an on and off switch. And by, <clears throat> by turning that to different degrees, then you're letting in a whole bunch of water, which is very hot, or a little bit of water, which is not gonna be so hot. And this thing is filthy, so that's why I took it apart. And you can see all the dirt and grime that's in this thing and you don't want to breathe that air so you want to clean it really good so I've already pressure washed it and if you look real hard maybe kind of hard to see uh, you can see all the way through this thing so I've ordered some uh, some cleaner and this is just some foaming core cleaner it's got this little nice scrub brush on the cap and uh, so I'm just going to spray it on here, let it foam up. And you need to spray both sides, not just this side. So let it get in there really good, penetrate really good, and then we can wash it off. Now this, this stuff here is actually designed where you don't have to wash it off. But since I've got it out, I'm going to go ahead and pressure wash it again to make sure that I get all this gunk off. So I'm going to let this set for a little bit. 
take my little scrub brush here. I want to be really careful. I don't want to go back and forth because if I do that, look, these fins are going to lay down. You can just go down through here with your little brush, brush some of those out. And while you're doing this, you can see how some of these are bent over. And all I do is when I rake this little brush across the dirt, it straightens them out a little bit, which is the way they should be. You don't want stuff like this, but they will not penetrate through those. So, that just cleans up real nice. And then I'm gonna do the other side. So now that I've cleaned it with some uh, of this cleaner, the coil cleaner, and sprayed it off, I want to take my air gun and blow as much of the water out of the coils as I, as I possibly can. In addition to the paint on, or the brush on, rusty metal primer, I will also use a self-etching primer. Now, just because I'm using this particular brand doesn't mean that this is any better or any worse. It just so happens to be the brand that's familiar with me at my local hardware store. One thing about these uh, cans is you'll hear that there's a ball in there. So when you first start shaking these up, sometimes that ball is stuck at the bottom. And you have to really, really get it shaking really good for that ball to start mixing stuff up. Shake the heck out of it. Make sure that that ball is running up and down and mixing all of this together really good before you go spraying. One of the biggest things that you concerns that you need to do is make sure you get all of the rust off of it. Even if it's pitted just like this, it's still sound, it's still good, it's okay. The biggest thing is getting rid of the loose rust that's on there and making sure that you put a good coat of paint on any bare metal that you have. To help speed up work when I'm working on such items, you'll see me use hair dryers help dry the paint a little faster so that I can keep working and I don't have to wait for paint to dry. Whenever you're putting any kind of seal that has a sticky back on it onto a metal surface, anytime that it's below 50 degrees, it's going to be hard sticking to this cold, cold metal. So I usually take my hair dryer and kind of warm it up a little bit before I stick it to it. When I first put this sealant on, it's very thin and it's a foam that sticks on there. But if you heat it up with a hairdryer, it will expand and take up any gaps that you have. Having extra extensions can help you get to those bolts that are really far away. Anytime you use any kind of solvent to get old adhesive and stuff off, make sure that you go back with denatured alcohol to get all of the residue off of it. Denatured alcohol has no water in it and it doesn't leave a residue on your surfaces. So new sealant can stick good. So I've got the heater back together, looking really good. And what I'm doing is I'm taking tape and putting around all the edges 
where these metal come together, I don't want any air seeping out behind it. I want it all coming out in the front. So I'm gonna use a tape to put around that. Now, you know, generally we use duct tape and that's D-U-C-T tape, not D-U-C-K duct tape. But I, you know, it needs to really be Underwriters Laboratory stamp. And somewhere I have some, I just can't put my hands on it right now. But this flashing tape, zip hits and flashing tape is used around windows and doors and to seal up um, the zip system OSB and it'll be sufficient for what I'm doing here. If you use regular duct tape, like D-U-C-K tape uh, or 100 mile an hour tape or Gorilla tape or anything like that, in six months, once it gets hot, it's going to disintegrate. It's gonna leave this film on there. It's gonna be ugly and be useless to you. So make sure that you use a good tape when you put on there. Look for an umber, underwriter's laboratory stamp on it. So I finished up with the heater and I put in two pieces of three quarter inch extruded polystyrene in front of that. And then I'm able to just push it in. The only bad thing is this is all of the, the thin weather stripping that I have and I've got to go all the way around this piece here so that it connects to the underside of the defogger. So I'm going to have to wait and go to pick up some more stuff. When you're sliding the unit in, be careful of this wire here. There is a bulkhead right here that is metal. It's kind of hard to see. And if you push it back and this is not above your heater, then you could stand a chance of cutting those wires. I also had to cut one of the three quarter inch pieces of extruded polystyrene to accept this wire as it goes back behind the heater. And now all I have to do is run my harness forward and reconnect it up in the front and then connect my hoses. When you're sliding the unit in, be careful of this wire here. There is a bulkhead right here that is metal. It's kind of hard to see. And if you push it back and this is not above your heater, then you could stand a chance of cutting those wires. I also had to cut one of the three quarter inch pieces of extruded polystyrene to accept this wire as it goes back behind the heater. And now all I have to do is run my harness forward and reconnect it up in the front and then connect my hoses. So my two water hoses, the heater hoses, will come from the rear of the bus in through these tubes here, come across in the front, and then they'll connect back into that. All I gotta do now is just hook up my vents, put the clamps on them, clean it up a little bit, put some insulation in the front here, and I'm ready to go.